Well, hello, hello. I hope you're able to hear me. This is Father Adam about to start our Easter Sunday Mass. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Please comment if you're here with me. I'd like to see um, who's here. This is also your opportunity right now before we begin, a couple minutes before we start, for us to write down our prayer intentions. Anybody that you're wanting me to pray for, please write down your prayer intentions. Any needs that you have. Remember, we believe in the communion of saints, so we are all here together. We are praying for one another. Also, make sure you are praying for me as well. Write down the names of your loved ones who have passed away. They're also here with us, joining us. Write their names down right now as I'm reading them so I can pray for all of them. This is the chance for you to go ahead and write down your, your loved ones who need prayer, anybody who's, who needs prayer in a very special way. All of your prayer intentions, write them down at this time in the comment sections. The names of your loved ones who need prayer in a special way. In your own needs. And allow yourself to be filled with this holy celebration with Jesus' presence. During the Passover, because this is what we are celebrating. We're celebrating Passover right now. During the Passover, the Jewish people marked their doors with the blood of the Lamb, and no death would touch them, not just them themselves, but their entire household. So you participating here with us today, being marked with the blood of the Lamb, is not just signifying that you are being marked with the blood of the Lamb, but your entire household. So write down the names of all your family and friends that need to be marked with the blood of the Lamb today. Write them, write those names down as we pray today. And we are all marked. And today, we are not just marked on the doors of our homes, but on the doors of our lips during this opportunity when you will be able to receive Jesus in spiritual communion because there's nothing impossible for God. God is all powerful. And so, you know, you may not be able to receive Jesus in holy communion, body, blood, soul, and divinity substantially, but you can receive him spiritually. And so today, I will be marking your lips today with the blood of Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, spiritually, because there's nothing impossible for God. God is all-powerful. And so your lips today, through this participation at this Holy Mass for Easter, will be marked with the blood of the Lamb to keep you safe from any death, any evil that may want to touch you. And so let's begin this holy celebration today. This is also an opportunity for you to share this Mass right now. Click share so that your family and friends can join us as well this morning as we pray on this Easter. First of all, Happy Easter to all of you. I'm so happy that you are here with me. I'm overjoyed that we are here together on this Easter Sunday because Jesus is risen. Yes. This Paschal candle right here represents the light of Christ that has entered our lives to dispel all darkness, drive away any gloom, drive away anything that is keeping us down or in fear, drive away anything that is keeping us in our tombs. Jesus is risen. He lives. Alleluia. And we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, on this Easter morning, when all seemed to be over, Jesus rose from the dead and transformed his life into a glorious life. He also wants to transform our lives with His mercy 
his presence, his love, and fill us with peace today. As we pray, think of any of those times in your life that you need to repent for and ask the Lord's mercy as we say together, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord is truly risen, the Antiphon says today. Alleluia. To him be glory and power for all the ages of eternity. Alleluia, alleluia. Say there with me right now. Alleluia, alleluia. I want to hear it loud. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus is risen as we pray. Oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Before we hear our readings for this morning, again, go ahead and place all of your prayers. I feel them in my heart so I can place them here on this holy altar. Your intentions, write all of them down there in the comments section. And share this live Facebook Mass. Click share so that others can join us as we are nourished now in this first part of our Holy Mass with the Word of God. The Word of God, the first part to come and enter our hearts, dispel the darkness, and bring us the light of Jesus. Let's listen to the Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good, and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted he be visible to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, 
ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Together, thanks be to God. Please repeat with me right now. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Right there where you are, together. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. For His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Right there where you are, together with me. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Together, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Together, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Now, let us listen to a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Together, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, stand where you're at, if you're able, and let us listen to the words of the gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you! A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. May the words of the Gospel be on my mind, on my lips, and always in my heart. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter 
and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clocks there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to die and rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord together. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. 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 Please be seated where you're at. We have been hearing yesterday at the Easter Vigil and today about Mary Magdalene. Every year I choose a biblical character to accompany me during these days of Holy and Easter. And this year I chose Saint Mary Magdalene. And Jesus says to Mary, Woman, why are you weeping? He says, why are you weeping? I've always looked at this question of Jesus not as an accusation to Mary, but in a sense, Jesus telling Mary not to weep, not telling her not to weep. He's not He's saying to her, why are you weeping? What is it that is producing your tears? In, this, in essence, Jesus is saying to her, what is it that is producing your tears? Face it, Mary, Jesus is saying. Face it. What is it that is producing your tears? That is the same question for us on this Easter Sunday morning when we find ourselves throughout the whole world enclosed in our homes under a shelter-in-place order. Why are we weeping? What is it in our own life that is making us weep? That question to Mary Magdalene is a question to each and every one of us. It is the question that I have been grippling with, that I have been struggling with this entire Holy Week as I have walked with Jesus. Why are you weeping? Because you're lonely all at home without your people, without to celebrate Holy Week with the people. Why are you weeping? Are you afraid? What is it? Is it your fears? Why are you weeping? I've been asking myself that question and I want to ask you that very same question this morning. Why are you weeping? What is it that is producing your tears? Jesus is saying it's okay to weep. Just don't pretend that the thing that makes you weep isn't there. We're so good at pretending in our world to put on happy faces, smiling faces. And at the same time, we go and we are all depressed. Rates of depression have never been higher and yet we try to pretend and have a fake 
Facebook Live, fake Facebook Live pretending that we are all happy and joyful because we are not ready to face all of that that is making us weak. Jesus is saying, face it. We have to be real, transparent, real with each other, open about our wounds, open about our fears, open about all of that which is making us bleed inside. Face it. Are you facing the why of your weeping or are you pretending that it isn't there? Facing the marriage problem that is causing the weeping instead of confronting it is that you need to bring about healing in your marriage you have to confront the how that needs to happen in order to stop the weeping are you facing the underlying causes of your depression and your anxiety get the help see the doctor get the counseling Start those medications. Medicine is a gift from God as we have been discovering during this time of such hospitalization. How much we need our hospitals and our doctors and our nurses and our medical professionals. It is a gift from God. Get the help. See the doctor. What are you waiting for? Are you weeping because you are lonely? Are you looking for a partner? You know, do something right now about it. Start a profile online. You risk nothing, you gain nothing. I know that many of you are saying, well, I don't want to do it. I know many people who have met, met their partners online and they are extremely happy their lives have changed. Catholicmatch.com or Catholic Single, Ave Maria Singles or Christian Mingle, I think those are some of the sites. Do it! What are you waiting for? You know, you, you, you risk nothing, you gain nothing. You're all miserable, what are you doing about it? Get that profile started. Are you drinking too much? Get yourself into an AA program today. Is there someone you need to forgive or ask for forgiveness? What are you waiting for? It's Easter. Pick that phone up and do it. And so what if they say, you know, no, at least you've tried. It's on them then, not on you. Is it the grief from losing a loved one? There are grief support groups. Even online right now, you can get yourself help. Yes, face it. Is it your employment situation right now? Maybe this is a time and opportunity for you to face the fact that you are not happy at work. You have one life to live here on earth. One life. And did God make you to be miserable here? No. If you're miserable at work, you've got one chance. Maybe this is a time for us to start over. If you find yourself in a tomb, rise. What is the tomb that you find yourself in? Get out of that tomb. Roll away the stone and start the life that God wants you to live. A new life, a risen life, a glorious life. What are you doing about your own unhappy situation that is making you weep? Is it your fear and your worries due to this coronavirus? Are you facing them? Or are you hiding from them? Admit what you're feeling. I feel oftentimes, you know, in watching the, the news coverage, that it, it, it's like I almost uh, caught the coronavirus just from the news. It's so negative. And there's so much positive news during this time. It's not all negative. No, it isn't. I have never fought for my people like I am fighting right now. This whole week, I have not worked as hard as I've worked this week in all 
the time that I've been a priest, fighting for my people. And I'm so proud that so many priests are fighting for their people like never before. People have realized what a gift we have been given in the Holy Eucharist that we have taken for granted. Sometimes you have to have something taken away from you in order to realize what a gift it is in our life. We have taken Holy Mass and our religious freedom here in this country for granted for far too long. Yes, we have. You don't know what it's like. I come from a communist country where religious freedom was restricted, where priests couldn't preach like I'm preaching right now because there were communist spies at Mass. And you'd end up dead like Father Jerzy Popievushko for speaking the truth in, in the Ukraine where I still have family. The Catholic Church was outlawed for 47 years. All churches closed and turned into chemical factories and grain storage facilities. And tanks were driven through the cathedrals in the Ukraine, but the church resurrected because we are an Easter people. We are not a Lenten people. Our life is not an entire Lent. That's why Lent is 40 days. But Easter, which we begin today during this Sunday celebration, Easter is 50 days long because joy always wins in our life. And joy has a name. And that name is the most powerful name above every single name. It is the name of Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever, who has risen and who wants you to rise as well. That hope wins that this weekend we celebrate that peace is coming into our life, that Easter is here, and during these 50 days you, you watch and you mark my words, because we are an Easter people. And an Easter is Passover. Do you know what the word Passover means? It's from the Hebrew to walk. That's why you hear Passover, it's got the word pass in it, because we're walking, because we are an Easter people, a pilgrim people. We are a pilgrim people that are walking our Easter walk. Do you know what the word Passover means? It means to walk. Limping. Walking with a limp. Yeah, we are walking as an Easter people. But we are walking with a limp. But while you are walking with a limp, you are called to be an Easter person, which means you are called to be a joy-filled person. And how can I walk as an Easter person while I am limping? Because I know that I am not walking alone. That this lonesome valley is not walked by me, by myself. That I've got my best friend, my best buddy, Jesus. He's walking there with me. And just as he rose, he wants me to rise. I am not alone. I am a company. God is with me always and everywhere, wherever I'm at, even there enclosed in my home, all by myself, isolating and socially distancing myself. I am not alone. Jesus is always with me, always. And he's with you there right now. So why are we weeping, says Jesus? Not to Mary Magdalene, but to us. He's saying that to you, the God we worshiped. And the God we worship, the God you worshiped in church, is the same God you are worshiping in your domestic church. There where you're at right now. The God we worship is a crucified God who isn't unfamiliar with darkness. Huh? Where we are, he's been there before. And where we are going, he is going there. He's already waiting for us, right where we're going. That's the God we worship. The Bible tells us that Jesus freed Mary Magdalene from the devil and from demons and from evil spirits. And she cries. She cries today as she's, 
She the one who was freed from the power of the devil. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII mandated that prayers of exorcism be prayed. Exorcism prayers are those that drive the demon out, and I've been praying those prayers during these days. To drive the demons of darkness, the devil and all his legion out of your life, out of my life, out of our church, and out of the world. And you know, Mary Magdalene is weeping because I feel that she's crying because Jesus has been taken away from her. Because to Jesus, she wasn't the crazy, the immoral, the sinful lady that to everyone else she was. To him, she wasn't that. To him, she was Mary Magdalene. And Jesus says her name, and something happens inside of her. As he says her name today, he says, Mary. And he's looking at you right now in this Easter, and he's saying the very same thing. He's saying your name. Something happens in her. And something is supposed to happen in you and I this Easter. As Jesus says our name, close your eyes there where you're at. And imagine Jesus saying your name. And as Jesus says her name, she wonders, who will ever say her name like that? She's crying because they took love away. And she doesn't know where it is. And she doesn't know how she could ever have it again. They took, they took kindness away. And she wants it back. And she doesn't know how she could ever get it back again. They, they, they took Jesus. She's crying because they took her wholeness away. Her sense of security. And she doesn't know where it is. She's crying because her sense of unconditional acceptance and forgiveness has been taken away. And she doesn't know where it is. She's crying because her hope has been taken away. And she doesn't know where it is. So she thought like many of us do in moments like these, and we have to confront those moments. I like to preach in a real way, you know, not give you any flowery stuff. I want to tell you about life, okay? And life isn't all peaches and cream, huh? I was invited not too long ago to have a meal with a family, and it was little Jimmy's turn to say a prayer before dinner. And as we all bowed our head, and Jimmy begins to pray, and he says, thank you, God for the turkey, the stuffing. Thank you for the mashed potatoes. Thank you for the ice cream and the apple pie. And then there's this long pause and we're all wondering, you know, what Jimmy is gonna say next. And Jimmy puts up his head and he says, Mommy, if I thank God for the broccoli, is God won't God know? He says, if I thank God for the broccoli, won't God know that I'm lying? Aren't we like that? We like to pretend that life is all peaches and cream and apple pie and ice cream and dessert. But life is full of broccoli. Not just broccoli, but spinach and Swiss chard and all those bitter greens, huh? Brussels sprouts, huh? We're getting our dose right now with this coronavirus pandemic. Maybe that's what you're experiencing as you lost your job, as you've been furloughed, huh? You have to spend 24 seven with your husband now and you're going nuts <laughs> or your wife <laughs> or your kids. It ain't easy, I'm sure, you know. I mean, I like to weep because I'm all by myself. But how many of you are weeping because you got to put up 
with uh, people in your life that you're very happy when they go to work in the morning. You're like, oh, finally I can breathe. And now, there's a lot of anxiety. Our life has been turned upside down. You've been given your dose right now as a people of Swiss chard. I was supposed to be leaving tomorrow for Poland to go and celebrate my 10th anniversary, which I was really looking forward to. There were all these pigs that were all slaughtered by my family in Poland and ducks and uh, my, my grandmother and everybody was so excited. Everybody was excited. I had all these people who were gonna go with me and we were gonna have a great big time and party and then boom! the coronavirus interruption. I thought I was going to have a, a breakdown when it happened. Yeah, even me, you know, as cemented as I think I am in my faith, even me, I threw my hands up and I said, Why, God? Why? Why? And right now I'm facing a situation that if my grandmother was to get sick, because she's more than 80 years old, they wouldn't even treat her in Poland because it's a socialized medicine system there. If you're over 80, goodbye. Like when she got sick in 2017. Do you have anxiety in me right now? Do you think I have it all together? Yeah, you think I have it all together? Some of you think I do. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff going on inside of me. That's why every single day I got to remind myself that even though I walk with a limp, I am walking with Jesus and I'm going to make it. And it's a daily struggle. I am a disciple of the Lord. Do you know what that means? The word disciple? It means I'm a student of the Lord. That means I'm in a school. I'm learning. I haven't finished yet. We don't finish learning. We don't finish being disciples until we leave this world. It's a process. We are in the school of the master. We haven't yet finished. And so Mary is crying. She thought like many of us do in moments like these that I've just described to you because it is dark. But while it is still dark, the Bible tells us, while it is still dark, as she thought, the tomb, as she thought, was the end of the story. It is not. The darkness does not dispel the light. The tomb is not the end of the story. Roll away the stone. It is never the end of the story. We are Christians. The tomb is empty. You see, for us as Christians, the glass is never half empty or half full. That's the world, okay? That's how they tell you always in the world. Well, you gotta have the attitude that the glass is half full. You know, it's how you're seeing that it has to be half full. That's a worldly attitude. You are a Christian. For you, the glass is always full because the tomb is always empty. Do you understand that? Your glass is always full. Why? Because you are full of Jesus. You are fully full, fully filled with Jesus. So your glass ain't never half empty or half full. I am fully filled with Jesus and I feel him right now like I've never felt him before. Even during these days of darkness and social distancing and not being around people, I have never felt the presence of Jesus like I do now. Isn't it in our dark times and in our darkest hours and in our sad moments and in those gloomy times that we discover our power? That's what the Bible says, that when I am weak, I am strong and I am made strong in Jesus Christ my Lord. In order to go up, you've got to come down. If you never ever fall in this life, you will never have a chance to get up. That's why we got to fall. And maybe right now we have given this chance as a country to fall so that we may rise up. 
Because remember one thing, only something that dies has the ability to rise again. You cannot rise unless you die. Unless the grain of wheat dies, it cannot rise. It cannot spring forth into a beautiful plant. You understand that? That is the mystery of our Christian life, that it is through, through, through death that we come to life. If you think you are stuck there in that darkness, I'm here to tell you this morning, this Easter Sunday morning, you are wrong. Stop listening to the devil. You, got, you need the same experience that Mary Magdalene had. That's why I thank God for those prayers of Pope Leo XIII. Those exorcism prayers, because what did Jesus do? He drove away the demons that were oppressing her. If you think you're stuck in that darkness, if you think it has all been taken from you and that you will never get it back, I'm here to tell you right now. And you listen to me. Because you need this message. It's for you. There's no coincidences. Everything is a God incident. Everything has the hand of God in this life. It's not a coincidence you're listening to me right now. Because God knew what you needed. God knows what we need. There's no coincidences. Let me tell you right now. Jesus hasn't been taken from you. Joy hasn't been taken from you. Hope hasn't been taken from you. Love hasn't been taken from you. It's there. It's there. You just got to get it back. So get it back. Get yours back. That's what we're doing right now. Let's get it back. Huh? I'm getting it back. What are you waiting for? The time is now. This Easter. It's not just the resurrection of Jesus. It's supposed to be our resurrection. It's time to get back. Let this be the decision point in your life. Whatever it is that's keeping you in the tomb and in the darkness. What are you saying? You saying with me right now? I want you to pronounce in your lips. Right now. Right now where you find yourself in. Right now, right there. Yes, you didn't know that Father Adam was from the south. I'm from the south of Poland. You gotta, I, I want you to repeat with me right now. I'm gonna get it back. Woo! Get it back. I'm getting it back. I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my hope back. My love back. Because Jesus has given it all to me. Now you see, Jesus chose Mary Magdalene. And let us think and reflect about that for a minute. Huh? Jesus chose Mary Magdalene, did he not? And he chose you. The woman of value. He chose a woman. I, I, I was reflecting on that this week. He chose a woman. Now, during those times, women were nothing. If you think women are oppressed today, okay, by, by men and by our society and taken advantage of today, you read about what it was like in the days of Jesus when a woman without a man was left to just be a prostitute or to beg. Women were truly truly just property and things to use back then and Jesus chooses a nobody according to the criteria of society huh? he chooses a nobody that to him is everything that to him is everybody he chooses a woman Mary Magdalene not just any woman but supposedly you know a sinful woman that he needed to drive demons out of. He chooses her to tell the boys. I like to think of Catherine of Siena, you know, in our own church, that we need a Catherine of Siena today to tell the boys 
huh? Or probably the greatest Christian in our lifetime, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, a little, little woman, huh? But with such power, huh? He chooses a woman. So often we think only the men have the cojones, but no, it's the women with the real cojones. I wouldn't be able to run this church if it wasn't for all the women who helped me. Behind every man, there are great women. And I thank God for the women in my life today. Yes. That's right, the women, the unlikely to confront the likely and to tell the likely from the mouth of the unlikely that love wins, that hope is alive, that death does not have the last word. Jesus drove the demons from Mary Magdalene so that when she looked into the tomb, she didn't see what the man would see. What did the man see when they, when they came to the tomb? We just heard about it. What did the man see? They just saw folded laundry, huh? Oh, there's laundry. That's all they saw in the corner. Saying that some women probably did the laundry. Hmm? No. Mary Magdalene, a woman. A nobody according to the criteria of the world. She saw what we need to see. An empty tomb. Mary Magdalene wasn't chosen because she fit the description of what the high priest was looking for in a preacher, in a witness to the resurrection. No! Mary Magdalene, the unlikely witness, the unlikely preacher, she didn't follow the instructions of the likely witness that needed to make themselves worthy to witness to the resurrection. No! The unlikely. That's the gospel. To the unlikely. To you. As unlike as you may feel, Jesus died for you. He came for you. Yes, you. You who feel like you are alone, like you are dejected, abandoned, lonely, depressed, full of anxiety. Jesus came for you and he drove a demon out of Mary Magdalene. And what are demons? In the Hebrew, a demon is called ha Hasatan. That's the word for the devil and all his helpers in Hebrew. And it means the accuser. It's the one who comes to you. You are down and gets you even more down and tells you you are ugly. Tells you you are no good. Tells you that nobody loves you. That nobody cares for you. That you will amount to nothing. Tells you that look at your past and all that you have done. That you are unworthy. That you are worthless. That's the demon. And Jesus drove all of that. And so when you find yourself right now isolating, oppressed by any of those demons that want to bring you down, I want to tell you, Jesus is with you. Oh yes, he came for you. You who feel like you can't live anymore. You may have suicidal thoughts. And you say, I can't keep going because of my health issues, because of my disease, or because of my broken marriage. I can't keep going like this. Those are piling up and you are out of work. The feelings that haunt you in your life, all those things that you have believed from your ex. Oh, you know, the devil has a lot of helpers, all those people who bring us down. They help the devil. That's why the Bible says you should only say the good things people need to say. Are you building people up in your life or bringing them down? Huh? I'm in your life to bring you up. That's why I always tell you I love you. And you wouldn't be attracted to me right now and watching this if I mistreated you. But because I treat you with such compassion... And because I tell you how much I love you and I care for you and I show you that with my smile that you're drawn to me because we all need the face of Jesus 
And you are called to be that face to those in your life. Right now during these days when so many people seem to be even afraid of one another. You know, if you're walking down the street taking a walk, which all of us should because we, you know, if we have the opportunity, we need exercise. I'm, I'm really learning that real well because right now during this social isolating, I feel like even the buttons on my belt are practicing social isolation or distancing, I should say. You know, they're isolating from themselves, the button on my belt. So we need exercise. But as you're, it seems to me as I'm walking down the street that people are getting away from each other as fast as possible. And I remember one time when I was in Crescent City and my grandmother was with me, six months with me, and we went to Mass and she didn't speak English or Spanish and she came to Mass and somebody came into the pew and didn't greet her, didn't say a word to her. And, I, and she was all down and, and she says to me, why didn't they say hi to me? And I said, Grandma, it's probably because they don't speak Polish and you don't speak English or Spanish. And she says to me, well, you know, you don't have to speak someone's language to smile at them. That's a universal language. You can smile at people. How many of you often say to me, Father Adam, how many languages do you speak? And I always feel like saying, what do you care? What does it matter? Yeah, I speak a lot of languages, and so what? But the most important language I speak is a language you can speak as well. And that language is the language of love. That is a universal language. And you can speak that language, and you are called to speak that language to one another. And so, that devil that wants to bring you down, don't let him resist him solid in your faith and know that Jesus came for you. You who feel you can't live like you can't keep going, that you're being oppressed. Just like Mary Magdalene was possessed by the demons of money, materialism, so many of us are possessed by those same demons. Like the casino or the bottle or our love for money or material stuff or the bottle or drugs or sex or pornography or going out to restaurants all the time and eating out and working at home. Our demons of depression or anxiety. Our demons of running non-stop 12, 14 hours a day non-stop. Maybe this is a time for you to stop and reflect that you've just been running. What are you running from? You should be running to Jesus and only Him. Working all the time, being addicted to work. You too, like Mary, need Jesus to come and exercise you. Hallelujah, it's happening. I can feel it right now. As unlikely as you may feel, because Asadan, the accuser accusing you, telling you you will never be free, Jesus is here for you. Yes, you, by saying, look, I have come for you. Yes, for you. I have died for you, Jesus says, so that I would not have to live without you. You are mine. Come to me and rest, for my burden is easy. Yes, it is, and my yoke is light. Come to me. Mary Magdalene was chosen because she was the one from whom the demons fled, the first to witness the resurrection. The demons were driven away. She knew what it was like to have God move in your life, not when the lilies are in full bloom, but when it is dark, she experienced the movement of God in the dark. Are you experiencing that movement right now in the coronavirus darkness? She knew God could move in the dark because he had already moved in the dark of her own life, in the dark away. She knew it could happen because it had already happened in her own life. It has already happened in your own life as well, hasn't it?
Think of all the times that God has brought you through before. We have been through so much as a country. Just think of what we've been through. The revolution, the civil war, the second world war, and we got through it. The dark times of the Cold War, and we got through it, we got through everything. Just here as a county, all that we've been through in the time, short time that I've been here, are fires. Yeah, and they didn't, they didn't end us. They didn't end us, they didn't have the power to finish us and kill us. No, they didn't. Neither did those power outages and all that we've been through. And neither will this coronavirus darkness because darkness has no power over the light of Christ. Darkness never wins. You've experienced Jesus moving in your life before. And in the darkness you met him. I met Jesus during the dark times of my own life. The dark times of being bullied in school. The dark times of having to leave my country. The dark times of my parents' divorce. The dark times of being told I had to leave in the seminary and having to flee and go to a different one. Being told I wasn't good enough to be a priest. Those were dark times. The dark times of having to leave a place that I loved. All those dark times, I weighing 325 pounds at one point in my life. I've had dark times in my life. And if it wasn't for the dark times, I wouldn't have seen the light because the light only shines in the darkness. You don't light a lamp when it is light already. You light it to illuminate the darkness. So the, dar the darkness cannot overcome the light, but the light comes in the darkness. All of this has already taken place in your life. You want evidence for God moving in your life? Look at what you've been through. That divorce. Huh? The abuse you've sustained in your life. The problems in your marriage and with your kids. You want evidence you've been through before. I've come through valleys and tears before. You know, I've already come through lots of death in my life. I've already come through much and grace has found me and will bring me home amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me over and over again God has acted in my life and in your life he did it before and he will do it again that's faith you know what faith is it's the ability to relax that's my definition of faith the ability to relax so breathe, relax, it will all be well, it will all be fine, you will be fine. So while the men would only see laundry there, Mary saw angels, didn't she? Because she was not unfamiliar with the darkness. Mary Magdalene had night vision to be able to see what God is up to and what God is doing while it is still dark. Huh? She had night vision. That's what we gotta have. Night vision. Her night vision came from seeing the possibility of what God is up to while it is still dark. She knew from her life that God acted in the dark. She knew from her life that God acted in the empty places. Even in tombs. That is God's economy. That, how, that is how God acts. Not like men act. Not like we behave. Not like we act as men. But that's how God acts. It is precisely while we are still in despair, the Bible says, and I'm, oh, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. It is precisely, the Bible says. I love the Bible. It's nothing like the Bible. Whew, the Word of God. It is precisely while we are still in despair, in the darkness, while we are still grieving, let me use the language of the Bible, 
As Paul says to the Romans, while we were still sinners, did God, in his Son, Jesus Christ, comes and saves the unlikely. But God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, the likely for the unlikely. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that we may live and have life abundantly. You know, I am a priest today because of the experience of losing my grandfather to colon cancer. He was a die-hard communist, a non-believer. He didn't go to church. In fact, he would always ridicule my grandmother and us when we would go to church. And he would say what the Communist Manifesto and the party would teach him, which was, work is my prayer. I don't need any church. I don't need any of this. Work is prayer, he would say. But everything changed in one week of his life when on a Tuesday he was diagnosed with colon cancer. And the following Sunday, I come into the kitchen and I see him all dressed up. And I say to him, why are you all dressed up? And he says, because I'm going to church with you today. And I said, huh. and at that my grandmother enters the kitchen, grabs me, pulls me out of the kitchen and says, shh, let's just go along with it. And from that day on, my grandfather went to church as long as he could, went to confession to the priest that he threatened. My grandfather threatened the same priest that later on heard his confession, forgave him his sins, and gave him the last rites, and brought Jesus down to him in Holy Communion. And my grandfather gave him over to God because what no communist doctrine, no manifesto could give him no worldly powers, no work, no money could give him. Jesus gave him, and that is the gift of peace. He died in peace. And that's what filled me with a great desire when I saw what faith did to him, what Jesus did in his life, to give my life over to God. It was in the darkness that I met Jesus during that time. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that experience. It is while we are so sure, so sure that nothing will come, while we are sure of the nothingness of death, while we are confronted with the emptiness of the tomb, while it is still dark that God does His most wondrous work, most marvelous most miraculous resurrection work. Hallelujah! And you know, to this very day, there's not a day that goes by. Just this morning, I was reminded of my grandfather again on this Easter Sunday morning when I was I looked down next to my bed and I saw a penny because my grandfather used to be fascinated by the cent, the one cent coin in the United States. He was fascinated by it. And I looked down and I said, there's a penny. There is not a day that goes by that I do not find a penny somewhere. And I know for some of you, you will say, well, that's a coincidence. It just fell out of your pocket as you were clumsily getting into bed. That's your cynical self. But I have a faith self. In your cynicism, and your doubt may say that it is just a coincidence. But for me, it is my faith that is telling me that my grandfather is alive with Jesus. That he lives. That he hasn't died. That he has just changed places. That his earthly existence was changed to an eternal existence. And that he is with me. That death did not overcome him. And that not only is my grandfather with me, but he is proud of me. And he's praying for me. And so I don't know why it is that it is only when we think we have exhausted 
every pious notion in our life, every pious religious notion sometimes has to be exhausted when we are called to throw up our hands. I don't know why that happens, because we all throw up our hands, the most religious people, you know? That's why so many religious people abandon their faith. Because every pious notion gets exhausted at some point. I know so many people used to be fervent and now they've abandoned it all. Because it has to be all about Jesus. And all that can only happen when every pious notion in your life is exhausted. And when you face your weeping, when you face your crying, and you declare as Mary Magdalene declared, Rabuni, she said, Rabuni, my teacher and my God. My grandfather had this happen to him in the darkness, not when things were going great. I too had this happen to me over and over again in my own night experiences. When we turn in the dark, in the suffering, in the problems, in the misery, in our fear. And we, in the dark, see a spark of light. We see a spark of light. We look at our candles. We look at them and see, and we say, Rabuni, Rabuni, my teacher and my God. Mary Magdalene thought it was taken from her. And then, boom! Rabuni, let that be the moment for you in your life right now when I come to you. As a priest of Jesus Christ, in his person, and I say to you those same words, Mary, Hear your name right now. Turn and say, Rabuni, for he is alive. Jesus showed up. Turn around. Look, he is here. That which she thought was taken away was right there with her. And for her and fighting for her. Jesus is with you. He's fighting for you. That which you think is taken away from you is there with you, helping you, sustaining you, loving you, holding you, pushing you forward, assuring you, you will be okay. We will be okay. We will make it. It will all be fine. Easter is here. 50 days every day we celebrate Easter. And you just watch. You just watch with me. You watch and pray, as Jesus said, patiently persevering. You just watch during these 50 days, during this coronavirus pandemic. You just watch to see all that God is up to. Because while it was still dark, death was being defeated. Darkness was being overcome. While it may be still dark, dark in your life, let me assure you, there are angels. There are angels, but you gotta be like Mary Magdalene to see them. Huh? Not like the boys. You gotta be like Mary. Huh? There are angels, let me assure you. They're hovering around you. Just like they were hovering around Mary Magdalene that first Easter Sunday morning, defeating death, conquering the darkness. For the story is not over. Oh, the story is not over. Your story is not over. And nothing, nothing, no darkness, no death, no sickness, no depression, no anxiety, no enemy, no devil, no, no Satan, no powers of hell, nothing, no powers here below, nothing, not even the coronavirus shall overcome it. Nothing, nothing can overcome the light of Christ 
Nothing can overcome Jesus. Nothing, nada, has the power to overcome you who live in Christ, who are in Christ, because Christ is alive and he is alive in you. He lives and he lives in you. And right now, right there, wherever you find yourself in and where you find yourself at, he is there. He is here. Rabuni. With you. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. And let's profess our faith together that gathers us here. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, let's make our prayers to the Lord. Place your prayers there in the comments as we pray today, if you haven't done so already. Pray for an end to darkness, for the light to enter our world as we pray for our church, for our leaders that we may always lead people out of darkness, out of tombs, and into the marvelous light of Christ. We pray to the Lord together. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for our government leaders, for all those who lead our world, that they may always lead us into the hope, seeking peace, for the oppressed, the marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for an end to the darkness of racism, the darkness of prejudice, the darkness of feeling like we are better than others, the darkness of judgmentalism, the darkness of gossip and making things up. Let us pray for an end to all darkness and human misery we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for all those who are sick, especially those who are sick from the coronavirus, those who need the healing touch of the Lord, that their own darkness may be dispelled by the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray during this time for all the homeless. Let us pray for all those who find themselves alone and lonely and depressed and anxious and fear-filled, that Jesus, our light, may enter them and dispel that darkness. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all the darkness to be driven from our own lives, that Jesus may enter into our hearts, into our temples, into us who are his body, into our homes, to our domestic churches, and dispel the darkness with his light, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who have died, especially my grandfather for whom I pray today, for all your loved ones, 
all those you have placed there in the comments, all those that I'm praying for that are in my heart, for Skip, Mona's husband, for Earl Gasky, for all those that are I'm praying for right now, and the names of your loved ones are coming to me at this time. If you haven't placed their name, place them in the comment there so that I can read them and then pray for them. Place the names of your loved ones who have passed away at this time. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who suffer from addictions, especially drug addictions. I'm thinking of all your children who are addicted at this time. Their names are in my head right now. Pray for all the people who suffer from alcoholism, from depression, from addiction to work or money or sex or pornography or fame. All the people who suffer from any debilitating addictions, addictions to food, addictions to plastic surgery. We pray for all those people that their own darkness, their own emptiness, their own tomb may be filled by the light of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray today for ourselves. Tell Jesus your prayers at this time, your longings, your fears. Pray for your home. Pray for your country. Pray for our world. Pray for an end to this pandemic. Pray for our nurses, our doctors, our medical personnel. Pray for all those who are making decisions. Pray. Pray for our economy. We need our economy to be strong. We need this to be over very soon because, you know, people are... People need their livelihoods, Lord. You know that. I've been praying so much. We all need to get back. We all need to get back, Lord. And during these 50 days of Easter, finish this coronavirus pandemic in the name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. Father, together, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands. 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. And during this holy mass, in spiritual communion, as the Israelites' doors of their life, their homes were marked with the blood of the Lamb, I will mark your lips with the blood of Jesus, your Lamb, so that no death can touch you as we pray, exultant with paschal gladness. O oh Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together now, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine If you're not able to kneel, at least stand for this, the most sacred part. And stay quiet at this time. Close your eyes and meditate on the mystery of Jesus. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. And remember, Lord, your servants, especially those for whom we now pray. This is your chance now to pray for your loved ones who are living. Place their names here on this altar. Who are you praying for? Think of their name at this time. Just as Jesus changes the, the bread and the wine into his body and blood, he will change their lives because there is nothing impossible for God. All things are possible for God. God is all powerful. So place those names here. Take this time and think of their names. And remember, Lord, all those gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we now venerate, Especially 
And this, the Easter Vigil, when we celebrate the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, we venerate the ever-glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We call to mind Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. We call to mind Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all the saints, especially our patron saints, like St. Jude, the patron saint of all hopelessness. Pray to St. Jude now for his intercession. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. And you say there, Amen. I want to hear it. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously hear this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock that you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation which we make to you and for those who have been pleased to give for those you've been pleased to give new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, O Lord. And now, be pleased. Ring the bell. As the Holy Spirit comes down, be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day he was to suffer, and the night of the Last Supper, while reclining at table with those he loved, he took bread in his holy and sacred hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks. He said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. precious chalice filled with wine in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. Together, the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty 
from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. Bow your heads where you're at right now. Bow up, bow down. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Make the sign of the cross. Through Christ our Lord, together we say, Amen. Let's hear it. Amen. And remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and sleep in the rest of peace, and rest in the sleep of peace. Now is your chance to bring to the altar the names of your deceased loved ones. Pray for them now. I pray for my grandfather, Stanislav, Stanislaus, and for all of your family members and friends. Write their names down. May these, O oh Lord, and all who sleep in Christ find a place in heaven of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Together we say, Amen. If you want your loved ones to rest in peace, so say with me, Amen, loudly. And to us also, your servants, who though sinners, strike your breast now three times. We are all sinners. All of us, we hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Agnes, Lucy, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Your patron saints. Mention the name of your patron saint now. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, O Lord, not weighing our own merits, but granting us always your pardon through Christ our Lord. Together, amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good gifts, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus' as children, knowing that we have one Father in heaven, let us pray now at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, the prayer that Jesus gave us. Raise your hands up to heaven now, as I do, and say with me that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O oh Lord, from every evil, especially the coronavirus evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that helped by your mercy we may be always free from sin, free from worry, anxiety, depression, free, O oh Lord, from all that disturbs us and perturbs us, free from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Together, for the kingdom, raise your hands, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace! I leave you. My peace I give you. Each time you came back, O oh Lord, to greet the fear-struck, the fear-filled disciples after the resurrection, when you came to greet them and visit them, you said to them what you say to us now who are isolating in our own homes. You say to us what you said to them. Peace I give you. My peace is my gift to you. Not the peace the world gives, but my peace I leave with you. O oh Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, especially the church gathered here through Facebook with me, the church of your home, your domestic church, the beautiful church gathered here. And always grant us the gift of that peace, the gift of unity, the gift of your kingdom, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. I can feel it in my heart that you've shared the peace with me. And now, if you're there with your loved ones, share a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, each and every one of you. Wave to me back. I want to see you waving. Peace be with you. I can feel it. And let's welcome the Lord in the Holy Eucharist, in the Blessed Sacrament, as we say, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. If you're able, kneel or stand. Don't just sit there unless you're infirm. Because Jesus is going to come to you now spiritually in his body and blood to seal your lips. That no death may enter you. Blood in ancient times contained life. People believe that blood contained life. So when Jesus gives us his blood, he gives us himself. Now spiritually, get that Jesus in you, his life in you, to dispel the darkness and fear, to take you out of the tomb. Let's seal those lips with the blood of Christ, for this is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those of us here called. How blessed are you there at home called to receive Jesus spiritually in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And I receive this Holy Communion in the name of each one of you. Make the sign of the cross as it's entering my lips. Close your eyes and feel Jesus enter you. As my lips are touched with his blood, feel spiritually. Remember, there's nothing impossible for God. 
He can come to you spiritually to seal you with His blood. Declare that His blood is sealing my lips and no death shall touch me. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. O sacrament most holy, repeat with me. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Together, one more time. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. One more time. O sacrament most holy. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to us and sealing us with your blood. We have been sealed with his blood. Now thank the Lord for this great gift that you have been given to partake in. This Holy Eucharist, the Holy Mass, Jesus gives us his blood because we need a blood transfusion. We've got to take the blood of the world and put his in us. When we receive his blood, it's our medicine. Remember, the Good Samaritan, what did he put on the wounds of the man who was assaulted, who was robbed and left for dead? What did he put? You would know if you read the Bible, you would know what did he put on his wounds? He put wine, right? He poured wine on his wounds. Why do you think Jesus uses wine? And where does he want the wine to go? In our wounds. And where, where are your wounds? They're inside of you. That's why you've got to drink the wine of Jesus. And that wine isn't just wine. It's Jesus himself. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. We're Catholics. This is not a symbol. We believe it's the real body and blood of Jesus. Substantially present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we receive him, and we take him, and we take that blood in us, on our wounds, to be poured there, to renew us. And that's my prayer at this Easter, as we stand. Stand up where you're at. It's prayer time. You can do other things later. Sometimes I get very upset with people who say, Father, Mass is too long. No, no, no. How long you go to the movie theater for? Or other places? Or in a restaurant, you can spend a long time. In the casino, you can spend a long time. At the bar, you can spend a long time. Enough of this. We gotta have time for Jesus because He always has time for us. And you can spend your time filling yourself with garbage. You gotta fill yourself with Jesus. That's why we gotta pray. And where in the Bible does it say Mass is supposed to be one hour when people tell me, Father, Mass went over a little bit. Huh? We need to be renewed. You know? If, you, if you're in love with Jesus, you wouldn't have this attitude. You wouldn't have a religious attitude that says, oh, I just got to, you know, uh, check mark, going mass, check mark. Is that all it is? For me, mass is not an obligation. For me, mass is a celebration. I celebrate mass. I don't know about you, but I celebrate mass. It's not an obligation for me. I'm here because I love God. And I love Jesus, and I want to be with Him, and I want to thank Him. And there's not enough time in the world that I could spend with Jesus. We need spirituality in our life. 
spirituality, not more religion, more Jesus. Religion says check mark. I'm done. I've done. I did my mess. You know, I'm done. But if you're a spiritual person, you say, I'm going to church to celebrate. Gosh, you know, mass is a great thing. Mass is not my obligation. It's a celebration. That's why I always take my time. I've never worked as hard as this week. Yesterday, Margarita said to me, she says, Father, you look like you're half dead. Well, you know, this whole week, uh, I've been really, really preparing. You know, because I'm fighting for you. Because I love you. And I'm fighting for you. For your spiritual life. I've never been so on fire like during this time to fight for you. And so I'm putting all of these spiritual nourishments on Facebook, my videos that I'm posting. Have you been watching them? Share them and share this page that you're on, the Adam Kotas page with your family and friends that they may be nourished too. Click where it says invite family and friends to like Adam Kotas, click that there so that your family may like the page and follow the page so that they too can have these messages, these uplifting, positive messages in their life that God gives me to give to you. They're all a fruit of prayer. Now, make sure you're commenting with your prayers. I read all of your comments. Send me private messages with your intentions and prayers because I read them all and I pray for you because that's my number one task. That's what I'm about, is to pray. That's what I do. I pray for you. That's why I take all of your needs and I pray for you because that's what I'm supposed to be doing all the time and that's what I do. So keep me busy. I like being tired. Make me work. Huh? Because when I get busy, you know, that's the best way to deal with uh, depression or anxiety or loneliness, is to get busy doing things for others. Yeah, so do something for other people. I want to leave you today with this reflection before I give you a final blessing. The Gospel said what? There was laundry there, wasn't it? Wasn't there? Huh? The cloths were neatly folded. Jesus did laundry. Mm -hmm. He folded the clothes. That was a sign in ancient times that when you leave your clothes behind, that you are going to get busy doing service work because Jesus came to serve and not to be served. Now, how are you going to deal with this time of socially isolating? Get busy doing things for other people. Now, did Jesus go and appear to the Sanhedrin or to the high priest or to crowds of people? No, he appeared to small groups of people, the two on the road to Emmaus, the upper room, small groups. As Mother Teresa said, we can't do great things, but we can do small things with lots and lots and lots of love. So get busy doing small things. Clean your home. Yeah, make a meal for your loved ones. Call somebody. Do small things. Write a note. Write something to Father Adam. Pray for people. Do small things. Don't be about doing grandiose things. And get busy. Because we are called to serve in our life. After the resurrection, Jesus didn't retire. You're not retired. You're supposed to be busy doing the work of God in your life as I am busy doing things for you. So like the page that you're on so that you may not miss what I'm doing for you. Click like on there, okay? And comment and put reviews on because I read everything. Do it and share this homily today because it's, do you know how many hundreds of hours I spend working on it? Do you know how long it took me? All for you. So share it. It's going to be on YouTube as well. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. There's lots of other videos there. Lots of messages. Keep watching it all. 
Keep listening. Feed your soul with positivity. Stop catching the coronavirus from the news. They talk about the same thing over and over again. Stop watching that stuff, okay? Fill your life with Jesus and only Jesus. Positivity, lifting up ourselves. Only the good things we need to hear. Now, there's gonna be a form put on later on on my Facebook page because uh, we have some wonderful uh, candles, Easter candles, that yesterday I exercised water during the Mass of the Vigil. It was the shortest Easter Vigil I've ever celebrated yesterday. You know how long the Easter Vigil took? Three hours. It was the shortest one in my entire priesthood. I've never celebrated an Easter Vigil that short. Because I'm not about short. I'm about quality, okay? You know, you could go to Mass and it's in and out. Like one person told me, Father, can't you do a quickie? How dare you call Mass a quickie? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself if that's your attitude. Mass is not a quickie. Mass is the holy sacrifice of Jesus. He gave his life for us. So yesterday, I exercised holy water, which means, you know, I brought the power of God upon it and... I also bless this Easter candle and there's salt as well that is exercised using the prayers of Pope Leo XIII from 1884 that are in the old missal. You know, I know how to do uh, mass in uh, this rite and in other rites as well and in the old rite as well because I get nourished by everything, okay? There's nourishment in everything that the church gives us and the church has 2,000 years of wisdom and history for us. And look at this beautiful candle. And so these are blessed. So we're not selling them. You don't sell blessed items. But if you uh, send us the request, we'll be happy to send you one as long as we have them, okay? Now, Easter is 50 days. So give us time for us to get these out to you, okay? Uh, I'm going to put a form on uh, from Survey Monkey that you're going to have to fill out. So don't send me messages with your names and addresses because that's a lot of work for me to take them out. There's going to be a form put on Facebook where you can submit a request and I will get these to you so that you can pray with a Paschal candle. I've already sent out lots and lots and lots of candles and lots of, uh, lots of blessed salt, okay? So it's all for you. You know, we don't charge for anything. Stop with this business mentality of church. The church is not a business. You have to get that away from our heads. It's all to nourish us and nourish our life. Now, we make donations in church, but they're called donations. Not, you know, we don't charge for things. And if you live here in Clear Lake, uh, we will have these out uh, starting on Tuesday. Okay, and you'll be able to pick them up and in, in, in outside. Uh, we'll, we'll put these out uh, by the office, okay? Uh, no walking into the office because we don't want our secretaries to be exposed to anybody, okay? But we put them out and you, if you'd like to drop off a donation for them, because obviously we didn't get these for free, okay? But they're blessed. Uh, you may do so, it's not a problem. And you can do so by putting it in the mailbox by the office of the church. It's a secure mailbox there, okay? So you can do that uh, as well. And this is all for you. A lot of you have already received the packets with the holy water and with the salt and with the palm and with the Easter candle, okay? And all of these candles... Uh, were blessed yesterday, hundreds and hundreds of them. I blessed and with the exorcism prayers of Pope Leo the Thirteenth. So I'm happy to offer that for you. We'll put the form on so you can fill it out and we'll be happy, those of you who are joining us from another place, to mail it to you. All for your spiritual nourishment. So fill that form out when we place it on uh, Facebook later on. And I want to wish all of you a happy Easter 
Enjoy this time. Persevere. Be patient with one another. Don't be like the lady who sent me a message and said, Father, I know you're doing exorcism prayers. Could you do FaceTime with me and exorcise my husband? <laughs> no! People come up with all sorts of things. I couldn't believe it. She wanted to FaceTime for me to exercise her husband. She says, you got, I, got, I, got, I need to get the devil out of him, Father. And I'm like, you know, listening to her, let's just say, I think she might have more demons than him. You know, but anyhow, I'm getting into something here that I really shouldn't get into. But anyway, uh, today in Poland, we offer eggs to each other. We share eggs. Did you know that? We offer eggs. We colored eggs. So yesterday I colored a bunch of my eggs and I had a, a, a couple of them. They were absolutely, you know, the best way to color them was with onion peel. Mm -hmm. I colored them with onion peel. Came out absolutely beautiful. So I've been having a, an interesting, interesting Easter this year, but it, it's also a very fruitful Easter. And so I want to, when we offer an egg in Poland, egg is a sign of life and fruitfulness and valor and strength. I'm offering you an egg right now. The life that it represents, which is Jesus Christ, with this blessing that I'm giving to each and every one of you. There where you're at, stand up to receive the blessing and pray for that blessing for you and for your family. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a blessed Easter. Eat together today if you have your family there. Eat together. Celebrate. Celebrate today. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And I love you. And I'm praying for you. And thank you for being with me today. And don't, don't be far away. Stay in touch. God bless you.